So there's been a lot of discussion about Rachel Maddow, who is, of course, MSNBC, by far Mm -hmm. their top-rated host who has a very devoted following. And uh, she went through contract negotiations. She basically was able to secure for herself the ability to step back from her primetime 9 p.m. show where she has been for years and years and moved to more of a weekly role. In addition, we have seen over the past uh the past several weeks, she has actually taken a hiatus and had her chair filled by a range of hosts. Uh, Ali Velshi was one. I think Eamon Moyledean filled in. Uh, Sometimes they had sort of a rotating cast of characters who sat in the chair. So there's been a lot of speculation about how exactly this is all going to shape out. It's obviously very important for MSNBC that basically doesn't have a single other host that actually drives ratings. She returned to her show and addressed the plans directly. So let's take a listen to what she had to say. So here's the plan. I'm back. I'm going to be here all this month, Monday through Thursday nights. Um, Now, for big news events, for things like the lead up to the election, I will, of course, be here more than that. Um, But that is the general plan. I will be here this month, Monday through Thursday nights. And then starting next month, starting in May, I'm going to be here weekly. I'm going to be here on Monday nights, again, to give myself just more time to work on some of this other stuff that I've got cooking for MSNBC and NBC. So Monday to Thursday nights this month, starting next month, I will be uh, I will be here weekly. It's hard to overstate what a dramatic shift in the cable news landscape this ultimately is. I mean, we talk about all the time, like putting their ideology and your feelings about these individuals aside. Basically, Tucker and Rachel are the only two people who really have this sort of like committed fan base where no matter where they are, no matter what time of day, they're going to show up for them. So for this to be the last month of Rachel doing her show— Monday through Thursday, and going to a weekly basis, this is a devastating situation for MSNBC. And just to put some numbers on it, we covered this before. While she was on leave, ratings dropped 26%, like that. Just 26% of the audience disappeared because it wasn't Rachel. She went to great lengths by the way, and I think this was also very telling at the beginning, before that clip that we just showed, to say, Ali Velshi did an amazing job, and we're proud, we love him, he's great, and he's a wonderful colleague, and I'm so grateful to him, and here he is in Ukraine, and all of this stuff, which also made me wonder if he is the one that they ultimately have in mind Mm. for that slot. We had seen a report, it might be Alex Alex Wagner, that they fill in there, but if they are looking in the direction of Ali Velshi, like, you already know how that went. It doesn't looked do well. Like yeah. 26% of your audience just poof, gone. Right. And that was with the expectation that she might come back. I mean, so Dylan Byers has a great piece in Puck News called the Rachel Maddow Iceberg over at NBC. And what he points to is they are paying her $30 million to basically produce some podcasts and then come on once a week. Now, to justify that, she has to bring in more than that in value. And maybe that is the case. I don't know. But he points to the real issue that an NBC management has had. They've had almost 200 days since that new contract was negotiated. And their whole idea is a fourth hour of MSNBC's Morning Joe. That's <laughs> that, that was the brilliant plan. Right now, Joe Scarborough is the star of MSNBC. So much so, he's got to be on the air for four straight hours because they have nobody else. Now, in terms of their bench, he points to the same thing. They don't have anybody they can realistically hire because there doesn't, there isn't really anybody else who is able to do that. You need to actually innovate within the format. They don't actually want that. And at the same time, they really are screwed. Like when he, what they point to is he would probably be better off is not having news at 9 p.m. and just putting Shark Tank on MSNBC. That might actually be a realistic, might probably be better off for the country. Well, too, back right? when I was at MSNBC, yeah. I don't think they still do this, but um, they would play that show Lock Up. Oh my god! On the weekends, yeah. you know that show. It's like some trashy, like, like inside the show, inside yeah. the prison kind of a show. They would play that on the weekends because they yeah. didn't have like a full weekend lineup, <laughs> and um, it would outperform the, yeah. oh, <laughs> the I'm news sure. channel yeah, of course. <laughs> easily. Right. Um, so yeah, I they're in a real. I mean, it's impossible to succeed with the model that they have because yeah. ultimately, what are they like? It's just Democratic Party cheerleading, and so. They are totally subject to the whims of the news cycle. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, CNN crushes them when it comes to some sort of breaking news event like what's going on in Ukraine or the beginning of COVID. CNN really um, sort of eats eats their lunch then. 
And then the, the bump they get is um, around election cycles. So I'm sure, you know, next presidential election cycle, they'll get another bump in the ratings and all of that. But in terms of having personalities that people are actually, like, care about what they have to say and are showing up just for that in terms of some sort of larger project, there's just not much there. So, uh, Rachel, I understand why they threw basically whatever at her that she asked for and whatever schedule that she asked Mm -hmm. for because they don't have really anything else. And I think that they—I think they know that. Um, Trump saved all of these networks— during his years. They they know that the cord cutters are here, that younger generations don't watch them, and that they're increasingly sort of irrelevant to the public, and that their business model is, you know, they're fine for now, but it is sort of on shaky ground. They know all of that, and they just have no answers because they can't break out of doing the same stale, uh, partisan-friendly, corporate advertising-friendly content that their whole model is based on. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.